Let's talk about accepting user input in ASP.NET MVC. You'll see there's a very common workflow that you follow in web browsers when you accept input using forms. So you begin by having the form shown on the page. So maybe the user does a get request to some edit page. So here we're going to edit the book with ID 42. The user will edit that locally and then we'll do an HTTP post back to the server with the same URL, but possibly some changed data. And then once that is saved, you'll typically redirect to somewhere else. Maybe uh, the read only view of the book you've edited. Maybe uh, if there's books in categories, you'll maybe you'll go to the, the category where the book was listed. Maybe you'll go to the home page, right? It kind of depends on your app, but this get post redirect pattern is super common. In ASP.NET MVC, that is typically broken into several segments using attributes. So here you can see we have a add book function and it has an HTTP GET attribute. That means it only responds or processes the GET request. Down below, on number two, we have an HTTP POST. This is the method that processes and validates the data. And during that, that method, we create the book or we update the book depending on our scenario. Here we're creating a new book with the various pieces of data and we're going to save it. And then finally, we redirect to somewhere else. In this case, we're redirecting to the category that the book was created or saved into. Here in Visual Studio, let's create a web app. I'm going to call it MVC Forms Quick Start. We'll just start with an MVC app. Here's the default website created by ASP.NET. Let me switch over to Visual Studio, make some changes, and get this ready for editing data. Now you can see I've updated this website. So it has a list of books. Currently, there are none. And the ability to add a new book. Well, almost. If you see it. And I click this, there's no get or post or any sort of code to handle this. So let's go write that now because that's really the subject of this conversation. So let's create our action method here and we need to call it add book. And over here, we're going to say that this is the HTTP get version. This one shows the form and I copied this from above. We don't need this inbound data. And we're going to have a corresponding a method here to process it when the person posts the form back to us. Now, C Sharp is not very happy having uh, two methods with the same signature. You can't overload on attributes, but you'll see that we can actually take this book class that I created. Let's take a quick look at that. Here you can see we have a general plain old CLR object. It has an ID, a title, and a page count. So we're going to use model binding to bind to this. And right now there's no validation, but we're going to go with this. So what we want to do is we're going to have do validation, whatever that means. And then instead of returning to the view, if everything works, we're going to have save book. And then finally, we're going to redirect. And we're going to use that using the redirect method. So we'll say return redirect. And then let's just go in our case to the home. Like I said, maybe the details view for the book, but we don't have that in our super simple example. So we'll go with this. Now this is red because I have ReSharper installed and it knows over here, there is no add book CSHTML file. So let's add a view and we'll just choose the defaults. And over here, we want to say this is a strongly typed view. It takes a book. So we're going to put that in here and we'll say add new book. Now, the first thing we need to do is have some kind of form as in an HTML form like this kind of form to accept the input. Now we could just start right in here. This, you know, one of the nice things about MVC is that we can just write HTML and whatever we type here goes out. And that's kind of the primary way of, of interacting with the HTML. There's no toolbox or anything like that. However, if we use a slight variation, some little helper methods, we'll get a lot more support later on. So I'm going to say at using and then I'll use the HTML helper and say begin form. And if you're going to post back to the same URL, typically you can just leave this empty. And now let's go over here. I'm going to say we're going to have a, some kind of label or description. And I could just type out an input, but I'm going to say at HTML dot text box four. And then given this method, what I need to provide is a function that says given a book, let's select some properties. So I'm going to say B goes to B dot and let's do title. And instead of having a separate piece of text over here, like we could say title like this, that wouldn't be very cool. We could just use a placeholder. So I can come over here and say new, and we can set uh, various elements. So I can say placeholder 
these are going to be attributes in HTML and this will be uh, just title let's say book title book title like that and let's do another one of these but this time we would like page count and let's go over here and just set page count page count and then we need a button to submit this so let's just add a button set it to be a submit button could leave that out would still more or less work but it's a little better if it's a submit button and we'll say create book now let's just run this really quick you'll see this looks really bad like it's straight out of 1994 but it does have our book title and our count and if i type some text you'll see those little placeholders go away and i could click create book and it should redirect us back to the home page so we're we're making some progress let's add a few styles to make this look less bad Another thing I can add is a class. So I can come over here and say class. Now this is C sharp and class is a keyword. So I have to say at class like this, but in here I'll say this is a form dash control. This is a C, this is a bootstrap class that will make this look a little nicer as you'll see. And let's say that this button has a class button and button dash success. It'll make it green. Now let's just look one more time. Okay. Things are looking a little bit better. One final item. Now, normally I would just do this in CSS, but let's just put some styles on here just to make this look a little bit better. In fact, we can probably just throw some BRs in here. Again, this is just a hack because I'm trying to do this quickly for you. Now you'll see there's a little more spacing. This looks really nice. Okay, we're ready to accept the data. We've got our form built. Let's go over to our controller and let's see what happens. Well, let's talk about doing the validation afterwards, but here we can just go to book and we have this sort of uh, temporary database thing that I can just say save a new book and then when we re redirect there we should see the title and the page count so let's do that real quick go over here add a new book this will be the first first book and it'll be 27 pages hey our first book isn't long click that boom here we go first book 27 pages let's add another version 2 uh, that'll be 199 pages create book you can see we're accepting this these books very well now one thing that's not great is if we forget the title and we hit create book well there's some unnamed uh, book here with 90 pages so we want to add a little validation here and that'll be the last thing we'll do in this example so let's go to our book class and over here i can say things like the title is required go back over here and try to add another book and if i hit create book it didn't really enforce that requirement, did it? Well, that's because the way MVC works is even if something is invalid, they may still post it back. You can set up JavaScript to do validation on the client, but this part about do validation, we need to do this. We need to say, let's have a look at it, even if it's invalid. So I can say, if not model state dot is valid. And if that's not the case, let's just return the view of the same data that they gave us. Okay, so this will not let it go by if it's invalid. Let's try that again. Okay, we're gonna add a book, try to add it without creating one. Now, it didn't go anywhere, and yet didn't give us any feedback either, did it? Well, let's try to fix that. Let's go to our form, and let's, at the top of this, let's add a validation summary, just like that. And then if I refresh the page, I can resend it, and we'll get information about what is required here. Beautiful. So let's come over here and I can say uh, the title is a real title. Now, if I hit create book, you'll see just the page count fields. Now, this is not great, nice and friendly. I'll show you how to fix that. And this is going to be 42. Right, there you have it. We use the get post redirect pattern. We use validation. We use model binding. And the last thing I promised to show you is how we can take this validation and do a little bit more, I can come over here and I can say error message equals, you know, you must specify a title or something like that. Similarly over here on this piece. Hope that's useful and thanks for listening.